NASCAR is exploring a possible street race in San Diego, maybe other cities as well, and Shane Van Gisbergen is headed to the NASCAR Cup Series next season. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. This is my second attempt at recording this video today. I forgot to press record on the camera for the first take, which means that you get the second take, which is going to be infinitely better than that first take. So let's get into the news. On Sunday morning, Adam Stern from the Sports Business Journal reported that NASCAR is exploring the possibility of hosting a street race in San Diego. They've targeted San Diego and Southern California as a possible location as NASCAR continues to explore their options and their presence within Southern California. Of course, when Auto Club Speedway closed down, NASCAR had to pivot, right? And they went to the LA Coliseum, built a quarter mile short track within that for the clash. But now that things have seemingly stalled out at the Auto Club Speedway site, no progress has been made on building a short track there. While warehouses have sprouted up absolutely everywhere around the track, NASCAR is looking at other areas. They explored having a possible race in the parking lots around Dodger Stadium with Formula E. That deal fell through. They explored possibly purchasing a stake in the Long Beach Grand Prix. That also fell through. Now they're targeting San San Diego to possibly have a NASCAR street race sometime in the future. No word if Ron Burgundy will be on the PA for that event, but it would be a interesting date. It's a place where NASCAR hasn't raced. It's a city that doesn't currently have an NFL team either. San Diego Comic-Con is their biggest event, which is a big event. But from a sporting standpoint, this could be a big time event for that city. And it's a destination race for a lot of NASCAR fans. It's a place where you can partner a vacation around the actual race. I was in Chicago earlier this year on 4th of July weekend for the Chicago street race, and it was a top tier event. One of the best events I've ever been to in person. If NASCAR can replicate that, what they did in Chicago, in San Diego with the beach and 340 days of sun or whatever they get, that would be incredible. Of course, it probably will rain if NASCAR does go there because NASCAR could go race in Ethiopia during the dry season and it would monsoon while they were there unexpectedly. So yeah, I, I will hold out hope that it will remain sunny when NASCAR does visit uh, San Diego if they do. Adam Stern also reported uh, in that Sports Business Journal article that NASCAR hosted a number of cities as a Chicago street race earlier this year to be like, hey, this is what we can do in your city. We can bring this event to your city, bring this level of excitement and these this many fans to your city. Those cities that have also had conversations with NASCAR, and NASCAR has spoken to groups within those cities, include Cincinnati, the San Diego of the Midwest. Everybody knows that. Pittsburgh, the hills of Pittsburgh would be pretty interesting if you can race across the bridges like your IndyCar at Nashville. Uh, that gives for a pretty good backdrop there, but it's a second race city. Go to Cincinnati instead. Baltimore, everybody remembers the IndyCar Street Race of Baltimore, fun and chaotic all at the same time. Put it around the harbor area. Yeah, I would 100% be on board with that. Stern also mentions the possibility of Amazon coming in as a TV partner next year, which we know is happening, that they're headquartered in Seattle. Could NASCAR potentially have a street race in Seattle with the help of Amazon? He explores the idea doesn't necessarily say if that's going to happen or if that's even a possibility, but NASCAR really wants to have a race for the Cup Series in the Pacific Northwest. That would be a great place to do it. Seattle is a really fun city. Having a street race there would be interesting as well. Also mentions Portland as well as Denver, another major market that NASCAR desperately wants to get to. I mean, Denver's closest race is Kansas. And if you've ever driven from Denver to Kansas, yeah, I love Kansas. I do. I actually really enjoy the drive across Kansas. But man, is it long, flat, and sometimes boring. Not as flat as you would think it, it is. Eastern Colorado is much flatter than most parts of Kansas. It is something else. But NASCAR exploring having... Uh, you know, a different addition to the street race is a good thing. Not saying that we need to have four or five of these a year. I'm saying that if NASCAR wants to have two street races a year, I would absolutely be okay with that. I would love for the Chicago event to stay. I think that's a great event, great city, so much fun when we were there. Would absolutely be fine if NASCAR wanted to make that like their version of the Long Beach Grand Prix every year. We know we're going to race at the Chicago street course. Really enjoyed it. But if they want to move it around, ah. Uh, you know, it happens, right? And I'd be fine with that because I think San Diego would be a great place for it. Cincinnati, obviously, I'm partial to Cincinnati. Uh, being a Cincinnati resident, I'm going to have to sit down and draw out what track layout I would want. So stay tuned for that video because it's absolutely coming um, in the near future. So overall, yeah, I love the idea that NASCAR is going to continue to explore things. And with Ben Kennedy at the helm here, kind of in charge of schedule making, seemingly the possibilities are endless. And I think that is a really good thing. They're willing to try just about anything at this point and hope that it you know attracts more people to the event. So NASCAR possibly going to San Diego and maybe other cities 
Today's video is brought to you by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Great sunglasses. I am very partial to the Classic as well as the Camber. Neither of them are in my office right now. They are both downstairs because I wear them on a daily basis. So head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Moving on to the other news of the weekend. So before things got absolutely crazy on Saturday night at Daytona and Harrison Burton shocked the world, Lee Diffie gave us a great call and Josh Berry ended upside down while Daniel Suarez was engulfed in flames and didn't even realize it. Trackhouse announced that Shane Van Gisbergen will be moving full time to the NASCAR Cup Series in 2025. Of course, we kind of all saw this move coming. It was always SVG. I've been telling everybody it's been SVG going to the third car at Trackhouse for quite some time. Again, I'm not going to tell you guys anything if I haven't confirmed that already. But when the team parted ways with Zane Smith on Friday night um, at the end of the 24, 2024 season, you kind of knew SVG was going to be the guy. Didn't expect them to announce it on Saturday, but they did. And for Trackhouse, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, you can argue that you know, signing Daniel Suarez to a one-year extension and when you could have put Zane Smith in that car, maybe it would make more sense. Zane might have more upside than Daniel. I'm not going to argue that, but Daniel did win a cup race this year. Hard to fire a guy when he's done that. Yes, Harrison Burton won a cup race, but he was already fired before he won that cup race. Then when you look at Zane Smith and SVG, who gives you the best possibility to win immediately in 2025? Well, that answer is SVG. If he wins on a road course, he locks that car into the playoffs. That's an extra $2 million, as Denny Hamlin talked about on his podcast this past week. Yeah, that's much better than finishing 17th. So they're going to take the risk of him having to learn ovals on the fly again, baptism by fire, kind of like he's done this year and hope that he can win on a road course to lock them into the playoffs. Makes a lot of sense, especially from a business standpoint. SCG's extended year as well. People are like, oh, he doesn't have enough experience on ovals. He's not that good. I mean, his average finish is 15.7, which absolutely is not terrible. He has six top tens, four top fives, three wins, all coming on road courses. But for the most part, he's been pretty respectable. I mean, he's gotten really good finishes on ovals where I don't think people maybe expected him to do that. The guy's going to continue to learn. He uses the first two stages as learning um, learning laps and then races in the third stage and typically gets a pretty respectable finish out of his day. For Trackhouse now, though, they have a pretty decent lineup. Now they just need to get speed in their cars. They have, of course, Rasha Sain in the one, Daniel Suarez in the 99, and now they will have SVG in the number 88 car. Now I know people are going to calm down, calm down. He's not trying to take Dale Jr.'s legacy. He's not trying to be Dale Jr. Dale seemingly gave his um, blessing as well. No, numbers are not owned by teams. Teams can ask NASCAR to not pass out those numbers. Teams can ask other teams, hey, do you mind if we use that number? You know, if it's a famous number or something like that. Um, but Hendrick Motorsports does not own the number 88. Hendrick Motorsports owns the font and style of Dale Jr.'s number 88, or maybe DEJ Holdings does. I'm not sure who owns it now, but is not specifically tied to Hendrick Motorsports. So he will drive the number 88 car. And when asked why, he said Trackhouse wants to add to the legacy of numbers. The legacy of the number one car, obviously with Steve Park, Jamie McMurray, Kurt Busch, and now Ross Chastain, they're adding to the legacy of that number with the 99. Of course, it started with Jeff Burton and Carl Edwards and now Daniel Suarez. And they wanted to add to the, the legacy of the 88. Dale Jarrett won a NASCAR Cup Series championship in that car. Dale Jr. made it famous, uh, won a Daytona 500 and a, couple, and a number of other races in that car. Now they want, you know, SVG to add to that as well. And I think that's a perfectly good answer and should be exciting, right? Why they didn't pick the number 97, I'm not really sure because SVG's always used the number 97, could add to the legacy of that after Kurt Busch had it, but whatever. I digress. So I'm excited to see him there. Zane Smith now free to look for other opportunities, probably Front Row Motorsports um, in 2025. And I think things are finally shaking out just exactly how we thought they were. Where did that charter come from uh, for SVG? Uh, when asked if it came from Stuart Haas Racing, Justin Mark said that's a good guess. Obviously, it came from SHR and their fire sale. Front Row bought one, Trackhouse bought one. Now we just need 2311 Racing to announce their third charter with Riley Herbst. And then all the charters will be spoken for that, you know, we're currently up for sale. So let me know in the comments what you think about NASCAR exploring more street racing opportunities, plus, you know, possibly going to San Diego, as well as SVG going to the Cup Series full time in 2025 in that number 88 car. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.